This is Jamaica West, and I am on the set list, 4th District. Check one, check two. Greetings, good people. My name is Adon Bean, and I'm so excited and happy to be here uh, with my guest for another episode of The Set List. And um, it's very cool. This guest uh, is someone that uh, I know, like, I'm just really kind of getting to know. I've been more familiar with uh, her work, uh, just kind of traveling throughout the interwebs. Uh, it uh, came across and I just really enjoyed and was impacted by her work and so I sent out the bat signal and she received it and managed <laughs> to come through which I very much appreciate and that is uh, me talking with uh, an incredible spoken word poet and uh, are you a singer as well? A little bit. A little bit? A little bit. A little bit. Uh, spoken word poet and a little bit singer um, <laughs> Jamaica West. Hello. How are you? I'm I'm better. Yeah. We were talking about this a little bit. I'm but better. you're better. You're better. Yeah. Yeah. A rough couple of days here. Uh, yeah, you know, uh food poisoning is not fun. <sighs> it's not. And um it's not. I literally never wanted to eat again. <laughs> and that's such a terrible like thing to feel cuz I love eating and uh, that's just I want understand. Air diet. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Well, uh I'm just so happy that, you know, managed to brave and get through all of that and that you're here uh, today with us. Um, yeah. And so just, I, you know, I think there are some people out there who are familiar with your work, who um, have experienced your work, either in person, live, seeing you at shows or, you know, your audio and your recorded material. But like if you had to give the elevator pitch of Jamaica West, what would you say about, you know, um, you? I think. I think I'm a I'm just a very um if if I had to describe my art or describe who I am as an artist mm-hmm. I think it'll it'll just always be a a a witty kind of just like <laughs> rebellious almost <laughs> contrarian mm-hmm. point of view a little bit of sarcasm to kind of get really harsh points yeah across yeah um they're just and and i i think i am that way because growing up as an african-american woman you kind of have to learn how to do that understood you have to learn how to communicate in some direct ways and some very non-direct ways Yeah. yeah um and i think me being a very huge introvert like oh God, really? I just learned how to say the things that I I wouldn't say, you know. In in conversation, I learned how mm-hmm. to say them on stage. Yeah, and then in writing, and then you know, so on and so forth. So. Yeah. Well, I mean, and I think that that's completely understandable. And I feel it's so interesting as artists when we talk uh, to one another, we find out how many of us who are on stages consider ourselves introverts, yeah. like. And it's and people don't people assume the persona or the person that they see on stage is who they're going to get out, you know, off stage. And very much it's not the case. (laughs) Uh, It was like, you know, um, yeah, I I find myself and I don't know if this is something that, you know, relates with you, but I find myself I don't feel like I'm being fake on stage at all, but Mm -hmm. I feel like I have to like like gin myself up to like, Mm -hmm. okay, I got to like give like more of my personality Mm -hmm. and make it you know um make it large for 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 a venue or for a space and so um but when i'm off stage i really i'm very good not talking to a lot of people at all i'm very good um you know preferable a lot in a lot of cases to like just keep to myself or be in the back and um yeah i just feel like a lot of people don't recognize that artists can like that duality exists a lot of times yeah. for artists and it's like like you said it, it's not fake it's just it's it's another part of me and to be honest who i am on stage the closest i get to that in real life is is reserved for very specific people like yeah that yeah. person who i am on stage is actually a very vulnerable mm. 
a very vulnerable mm. person that's like, okay, <laughs> back it back up. Right, 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 right. Y'all can't see that now. Yeah. Yeah. Understood. So, yeah, that duality. Understood. Yeah. Well, I think that um, when we were talking about this uh, before we started recording, like I was trying to figure out where exactly I first heard you or how that happened. And I think, I do just think it, like there's a lot of, perhaps like mutual friends or acquaintances or things like that. And, um, and I remember hearing a piece of yours that, um, that stuck out to me and I can, you know, say in full, (laughs) full disclosure that there are a lot of, uh, spoken word poets generally, but specifically like Christian themed spoken word poets that I don't, that don't resonate with me per se. And I don't even, uh, let's say want to box you in in that place or whatever i think uh, we discussed this i think you know being a believer but also like having uh doing your art in such a way that um that you this feels kind of like an invoke thing to say but like doing your your work in such a way that um you don't court the classification but mm-hmm. if it comes to, on it then it's it's fine, but it's not something that you're like running after. <laughs> Those were finger snaps. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I mean, is that fair to say that yeah. that's essentially your approach? Yeah. Got you. Yeah. Um, I kind of want to ask like some more like foundational questions just because yeah. like I said, I don't, Yeah, let's do it. I, I don't know. So like, when did you start uh, and let me back up with the set list in general. Most of the people who do tune into this realize that what we do is we discuss artists by getting to know their influences. And we'll do that through the context of a set list or a track list and things like that. And so we'll do that, but I just want to make sure that we like, like lay the groundwork for who it is that we're talking to. And, uh, but so with that being said, like you, um, you are in Chicago. Mm -hmm. Um, did you start writing? Like, w- when did you start writing and performing? I started, like, writing um, fresh freshman year of high school, going into my sophomore year. I'm originally from Columbus, Ohio. Um, you, I'm an Ohioan as well. Are you serious? Is, yeah, I am dead serious. Where I'm from that? a very small town called Maslin, Ohio, which okay. is Canton, Akron area. So, yeah, yeah I am... I'm back there very often. I'll be back there next week. Like that is that home. is why. <laughs> but yes. <laughs> but anyway, okay. I didn't know you were from Columbus. That's what's up. Yeah. So <laughs> I'm I'm an Ohioan. Yes. Um, so you're automatically good people. Like that is how <laughs> <literally>. that works. <laughs> um, that's a whole other conversation. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> um. So so at the time, well. Even years prior to that, louder than a bomb was something that was started in in Chicago, and it was like a really big um, slam poet scene for high school and middle school students gotcha. and things like that. And so, my um, what was Wick? Wick was our humanities English teacher, Mister mm. Wick. Okay, he was like super into poetry, and he was like, "I want to do this here mm-hmm. at, at our high school." And then my high school was Eastmore Academy, and so right around that time, I had I was a freshman, and you know, for one of our assignments, we had to write a poem, and I wrote this acrostic poem that was so stupid to me, but <laughs> it got passed around between the teachers, and they're like, "Wick is like recruiter for the slam team," and, <laughs> and like you know. I'm just like, ah, I don't know. But at the same time, I really wanted to be involved in mm-hmm. high school. I, I wanted to have that high school experience. And so I was getting involved in as many things as I could. And then at the same time, like, you know, I was being courted to do, um, what, what's it called? When, basically, I was, I was going to be in college and high school at the same time. Oh, okay. And so because of that, I was like, I need to do as many activities as, as I can. Right. So that was the major consensus of me saying okay i'm gonna do this this and that right but when i got into the classroom and it was me and you know a few other poets it just became like some great debaters level stuff and and wick really um he taught me about writing Mm -hmm. and and i would actually attribute like my writing style to him because you know at the time i was uh, i had just came to the faith and mm-hmm. he was like 
you know, he he was he wasn't a believer, but mm-hmm. he's like, you know, you can say what you want to say without preaching at me. Absolutely, yeah. And when he would say that to me, I would be like, okay, so I need to learn how to say this in a different way. Mm-hmm. And so that changed the way right. that I that I wrote and how I was able to communicate things. And he taught me a lot of what I know about performance. That's amazing. Um, and so that's how I got my start. And that was about 10 years ago. Wow, yeah. <laughs> but I, I was trained by someone who's just a great writer. I don't I don't have mm. any other, you know. Yeah, no, that's super dope. And it, it's so amazing. Like, um, I would say, like, whatever has set my trajectory on the path of English and writing and things, it was, like, my AP teacher in, in high yeah. school as well. Like, uh, my English teacher and, like... Mr. Harding, I still remember like what he taught and the way he taught and it just opened up so many worlds for me yeah. and it and it's been something that I felt like going forward I want to open up worlds for other people as well and so um no that's super super dope. Let me ask um are you still plugged into the slam community in Chicago right now or no? Yeah, I mean a lot of my friends are a part of it by default. By default, yeah. They're poets sure. and so um, they're always at Louder Than a Bomb. Okay. Always volunteering. Mm. I have yet to go. I got you. <laughs> I have yet to go. Yeah, because I know uh, the uh, NPS, the National Poetry Slam, yeah. is, is in Chicago yeah. in a couple months, actually. Um, and so there's, um, I didn't do the, I didn't do one of the Atlanta teams this year, um, but I will likely be there just to support and help out and assist and things like that. So nice. um, Chicago has such a great, rich history of of really dope spoken word artists and yeah. poets and slam poets and things like that. And a lot of, like, a lot of different styles, I would say. That's what I, like, when I think of Chicago poets, um, I just, I can pick out, like, three or four different, like, types of ways in which... Um, you know, it, it, basically, when I hear someone and they're like, "Oh, I'm from Chicago," I'm like, "Okay," and it, and it's it's unique in its own way, I mm. guess is what I'm saying. And so that's just yeah, super cool, super dope that that has been there. And so and but you've also um, you travel a bit too, doing yeah, doing the I, work. Yeah, I do. Yeah, I get a chance to. Yeah, that's what's yeah. up. Um, at this point, uh, you said kind of before we got started that just kind of you find yourself in LA often as well. And Mm -hmm. in addition to Atlanta, I think, is it family and friends in both cases or is there work involved? There's there's usually a mixture. (laughs) I, there's usually work involved and I find a way (laughs) to get up with friends. Cause it's like, you know, who wants to just be, even though I love art, who wants to just be here? Just, you know, absolutely. Just to do that. Like, yeah. You know, especially with L.A., like, it's such a beautiful, beautiful place. It's almost <laughs> toxic. It's scary, you know. <laughs> but I'm like, I, you know, I want to be able to get up with friends. So there's that. And then, you know, yeah. I think, and then, like, New York, Atlanta, L.A., mm. Miami a little bit. Those are, like, really great places to get, like, just central meeting places for artists. And so, like, there's a lot of work to be done there, whether it's, like, meeting up with photographers or sure. stuff like that. So. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I wanted to talk, uh, you know, as we'll kind of get to know, you know, you in ways in which we'll be able to figure out, like, who kind of musically what's influenced you and things oh, like yeah. that. Well, I want to definitely dig into that. Okay. Um, but with that being said... Uh, last year, you put out an EP. I did. Called Barry Cinderella. I did. Yes. I listened to that pretty often. That was pretty... You really? <laughs> What's that look? <laughs> what, is, what is that look? <laughs> I don't know. I think, you know, Barry Cinderella was like... That was like the first thing I've ever... Is it? Yeah, like the first project that I've ever actually put out. And, okay. It's like one of those things where like, okay, I did that. Yeah. But it's like, okay, I, I don't want it. Yeah. Yeah. You know? You've already moved on. I've already of... I've already moved on and, mm-hmm. and also kind of just like we'll leave it at that. Okay. Okay. <laughs> can we can can we play a little bit off of it though? Can we can uh we... Whichever way you, whatever one you you dig. <laughs> well, here's the thing. So what I want to do is, um, I, I, this is so awesome and amazing uh, because it's such an artist thing to 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 do. Like I, yes, just to have a work and then to be like, um, nah, like I'm 
I, I got so much more yeah. to give. Like so, I can. Do, that's I not can even. Do better. Yeah, I, I can do better. <laughs> believe me, <laughs> my nigga. So yeah, uh, but it's uh. So, you, but I I wanted to talk about a little bit, uh, just a two or, two or three songs off of, and I realize okay. it's not you know it's a okay. f- it's five song EP, but okay. yes, yeah. um, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but you know I wanted to talk uh, definitely about the what would essentially be the opener, which is this uh, the title track, Barry Cinderella. Yeah. So I'm gonna play just a little bit of that, and uh, we'll talk about it. Beauty and the Beast. Martin and Martin and Gina and Coretta, Whitley and Dwayne, Snow White and the Little Mermaid, Malcolm, Betty, Beyonce, Jay, Michelle, Barack, Winnie and Nelson Mandela, but you, you always wanted to be a figurative Cinderella, 16, smitten, mesmerized by how patriarchy paired with purity culture could make the fairy godmother and allegorical holy spirit transform you promise you a perfect prince for a groom no more lonely if only you kept your legs closed and hair prim and perm straight no nap no kitchen no waste no way stay thick drop a filter on your pit to make your melanin hutus and tootsies light skin cause that's what can get your kiss to turn the frog you date into a prince don't protest black, black lives matter. Free women matter don't protest their right to their own thighs. Don't tweet. Holy women who want a ring, don't read. So, but what? ladies and gentlemen, Never that turn. was oh, Barry Cinderella off of uh, the eponymously named uh, Barry Cinderella EP. Um, and what I, I think what struck me when I first heard that uh, song was kind of just the disservice that so many of these kind of fairy tales and uh just kind of the language and nomenclature that we provide for little girls growing up um how um kind of destructive that is well, when you start to unpack some of those stories and those narratives and you know I don't want to speak for you but I'm I'm curious like uh what was the source in creating the song or the i guess i'm assuming maybe it was a piece before did did you place it to music or w- did you write it to the music itself um how did that go um i i wrote it and then i just heard I think I wrote it, and then it was like, well, what beat would sound better with this? Mm-hmm. Let's do it to this one. And then they, we did some edits around it. Yeah. 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 So that's how that went. You got you. Yeah. So when you were just <laughs> writing it yeah, in and of itself, um, what was the like starting point for you with it? I think for me, um, I was just tired of purity culture. Okay. And I mean, that's something I've been tired of. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and purity culture comes in, in like many forms and fashions. But like to me, it's obviously like a bigger, a part of a bigger issue, which I, I spoke about on Magic with, you know, Taylor Gray's piece when okay. you heard. Okay. But I, I think like. I, I And if you could, because uh, we have some people who oh, aren't Christian oh, or don't okay. even understand okay. Yeah. Purity, what? But like, um, yeah. Can as best you can, or at least what you're speaking to about it. Um, can you unpack what purity culture is? So purity culture is like it became very popular in the in the evangelical, like conservative right mm-hmm. Christian um, area. And really, what it says is like if if you do all these righteous acts, like if you if you don't have sex, if you don't even kiss a boy, if you, mm. you know, keep all these commandments and, mm. you know, do all these external things. Sometimes, like, not even dating. Not like even you, dating. Yeah, you know what I'm like, I kiss dating goodbye. Like, you know, all these different yeah. things that um, then it kind of, like, guarantees you this dream. Right. Which is what? A husband. <laughs> <laughs> You know, just to be able to, you know, a, a, a blessed, quote, in quotation marks, a, a blessed mm-hmm. life. And and I see that not only in, like, evangelical, just in Christianity, period. Right. You know, I won't even pin it on them because we have that 
in black church in True. whatever and and we have that in America, right? Where yeah. it's just like this this thing if if I go to college, if I get the grades, if I get if I get above a 4.0, graduate magnum cum laude, mm. if I, summa cum laude, whatever mm. it is, if I work at Google right. and I get all this money and I do all these things like this is going to buy me happiness. This is going to make me feel better. If right. if I get signed with Interscope <laughs> and Jimmy Iving comes back to Interscope and he manages <laughs> my project, right. I'm going to be the next Michael Jackson right. and that's going to make me happy. Yeah. And I won't have to OD on opioids. Yeah. But like that's not Yeah. It's not the truth. There is no there's no real formula. Right. Right. And that I think in itself was just like F is fucking me up. Yeah. And so like Barry Cinderella on surface, I had to find a way to like unpack it mm-hmm. in and kind of just find other ways to say what I wanted to say. But on a very surface level, it's, it's about relationships, but really it's just about life, yeah. about like feeling like I did everything that I thought I could do right. And it's still not working. Yeah. You know, it's such a crazy scenario when like, you see, uh, you see, like when God gets boiled, boiled down to those formulas or those equations, and like we're we're taught that oftentimes, and led to believe that what you've discussed, like man, I've done, I've done like my end of the bargain, yeah. So then, clearly, God owes me X, Y, and Z, and then you realize, like, it takes a lot of sometimes heartbreak and not even just that, but just like anger and yeah. resentment that settles in because you're, because you've been told this lie yeah. that if you do all of this shit, then eventually like you then get this promise. And it's like, yo, that's like that's not true. Like that's Dude. not true. There are promises of God. I don't want to get away. I don't want to you know lie about that. But like the way in which we've taken those things and reworked them in like very man-made ways. Um, to, it's just such a, such a disastrous, it has such a disastrous effect. And I've seen personally, I've seen people who came to Christ being given those formulas. Mm-hmm. And when they realized they didn't work, they leave. They leave. They're like this. This was a farce. This yeah. entire thing was a lie. Like, and they throw out the baby with the bathwater. They throw out so much because they're sitting. And of course, there'd be the arguments about, well, they didn't really, blah blah blah. But like, no, like you provided a faulty premise to begin with. Like yeah. that's the way you position this. And so, I think it was very um, wise and apt of you to like find the ways in which this is not even. This is not strictly a church problem this this finds itself in humanity often and like you said we're given you know uh the american dream and what 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 you can do and then what you'll be promised and what you'll be given and yeah i think this generation a lot of us we've just really understood that um yeah niggas was lying yo (laughs) <laughs> like straight up to our face that's why we don't trust y'all that's why we gotta google everything <laughs> but um yeah uh so you know but i think one of the lines in in um in barry cinderella that that I, and i meant to like write this down because i wanted to get the wording properly but like there was something a lot like when you get towards the end of it and you're speaking to like uh you said something like you won't recognize yourself or you and and i don't remember what that line was but there was a telling thing where it was like you were you were talking about the um <laughs> you'll find um you'll you'll find a man and then immediately become like a relationship guru on like <laughs> I, <laughs> I think it was like your ig or something yeah, like that yeah, yeah. um oh man okay. so accurate yeah. so accurate like it's like well, you have purpose now <laughs> it's like so you you didn't have it before like it's um man it's really crazy but have you found and i know you said this was kind of like your first work that you were putting out for yourself yeah. like like um being that you know you've 
do spoken word, but then also sing a little bit as we established earlier. Uh, <laughs> uh, like, have you, have you gotten in the, I realize this is not how this song was done, but have you been able to do works where you were working with the musician or the producer and that it was a, as opposed to you taking a work, a pre-existing work and finding a beat or finding something, have you been able to work in such a way in which you are crafting it alongside or with the music or um, to the um, not, I, not in the way that, that I would like for it mm-hmm. to. This next project, I have a collaborative work going. Okay. Project coming with this, um, his poet, this poet named Michael Nelder. And okay. we're doing a collaborative poem. Exclusive. Project. Um, and so if you look up his work, he's like kind of on the same mm-hmm. like wave. I don't want to even call it a wave. Mm-hmm. But this is the first time now where it's like, okay, let's work together versus yeah. like, all right. Here, can you make me this beat? Yeah, yeah. Send it back. Like, oh, I don't really like that. <laughs> oh, I don't got time to send it back. Let's just make it work. Like, right. You know. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Got you. Yeah. So that's cool. Um, I'm so what we do as I said on the set list is we like to also know what inspires you, and yeah. so one of those things uh, is that you know we like to talk about openers. Like when you're crafting a set, we think of like you know, what would be your opening song and something that grabs the listener to begin with or whatever. And then, you know, for the case of the Barry Cinderella EP, that was uh, the song we just played. But I'm curious, what might be like perhaps your favorite opening song to an album? I was just tweeting about this. Really? That was so funny when I saw the question. (laughs) Dude, okay. And and because I'm like a a logical person and Mm -hmm. I'm like super analytical, Mm -hmm. I want to preface this statement by saying this is not... This is my opinion. So this isn't the greatest of all time. Okay. Okay. But of my subjective opinion and just personal preference. Yes. Just because of emotional and all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. TLC fan mail. Do like I remember that. (laughs) When did that come out? In 1999. I was born in 93. Mm -hmm. I was what six years old <laughs> and i remember hearing that damn um <laughs> robot voice like, what is this and they said just like you i get lonely <laughs> <laughs> On it the was floor. a rap. It was a rap. <laughs> it was a rap. I was like you know and they had like fan mail. Like you know you can hear teal you can hear left eye you know talking about the press reports and you know because at the Mm -hmm. time she was going through a lot of things and Mm -hmm. you you know it it was like a response to the fans everyone who was writing to them and trying to figure out what's going on it was like that was the perfect response and to do it at the beginning and then to also say like you're writing to me like can you help me i inspire Mm -hmm. you will you inspire me and just like you like i get lonely what (laughs) (laughs) to this day i still get goosebumps because i'm like who who was that was that um what what is his name uh blah blah dallas austin dallas austin dallas austin dude like here we go ladies and gentlemen tlc fan mail yes welcome we've dedicated our entire album cover to any person who has ever sent us fan mail Yes, yes, yes. 
It's just nuts. It's so, so nuts. Um, and I love it because um, it's, it's weird. Like, I feel like the like public goes in waves of like recognizing TLC, yeah. like truly for how amazing and groundbreaking they were. Like, there'll be a moment where I feel like, okay, everyone's recognizing how dope they, they were and like what they provided and like all of that. And then I just feel like, it escapes the consciousness yeah. for far too long. Like so incredible. You had a tenor lead. It's it's nuts. What? It's nuts. It's nuts. Like I think um just the way that they owned so much of uh their identity and their like and their brashness and the way in which the like even in the reinventions between albums when you look at Ooh yeah. on the TLC tip and you look at Crazy Sexy Cool and you look at Family, like you look at these projects and you're like, you can look at them and identify the era yeah. that they were in, but still being able to make catchy, prov- provocative, but yet impactful and message. But like, it, yeah. they, they really like had such a total piece and like had such a, um, a grasp of like, r&b sensibilities but certainly like hip-hop at its core at ways and i yeah Yeah. so much to say about them like super dope and it's dope because i think this is the first time uh tlc has been brought up on the set list so thank you jamaica (sighs) if for no other reason thank you for providing that but um but no that's super super good and i think um you know uh we have a part of the set which we call like kind of um a crowd pleaser in which we kind of ask a question from the audience, but I've been asking you questions, general questions all throughout. So (laughs) we'll we'll move right along from there. But, um, but I also wanted to ask, um, that, you know, you, I lost my question here. (laughs) I also wanted to ask like, so when you were doing, um, the, Barry Cinderella EP, and you mentioned this with even with this upcoming project that you have uh, with uh, Michael Nelder. Says yeah. him. Um, you know, there's like special guest parts, you know, collaborative works and things yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm curious, um, even on um, the uh, Barry Cinderella EP, you worked with uh, a vocalist. Um, well, you worked with a few, right? Yeah, I did. Mm-hmm. Um, uh... Like when I think, um, am I saying is it uh, Keisha yeah. Solio? Is yeah. that right? How to pronounce that? Um, so like, I know that she was also she was on like a couple songs, but I want to talk about this one that featured not just her but Sabrina Touchstone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kogo, this song called Bridge. I'm gonna play a little bit about it. Okay.
So, um, so how did this song Bridge come about? Do you remember? Yeah, actually, Bridge was written written for uh, a completely different song and beat. Interesting. <laughs> Okay. And um and I just had it in my head at the time I was listening to well I'm I'm a huge fan of Shaka Khan. Mm, she, I okay. I, I did I, I just, hear the vibe. I love Shaka yeah. Khan and she has a song Love has fallen on me. Absolutely. Um a couple people have tried to sample it and they have mm. not done it justice. <laughs> um but there's this amazing like musical build up when it's like when when she sings one day in September love has fallen and her vocals are <laughs> she's doing it. Uh, uh, like she does yeah, yeah. and yeah. you could just Tip of the shop. Yeah. and um I just had a big idea to like I wanted to do a live sounding song. Yeah. I wanted to sound live and so um and so I had called Alex Hitchens. He's out in LA. Okay. And he did a lot of the a lot of the work and then we went and redid some of the, you know, to make it sound more live. Mm-hmm. Um but that's how that came about. It was just like a melody in my head. I was playing around with my guitar mm-hmm. one day. Um, yeah, yeah. Super dope. And so do you do you play uh, <laughs> the face? Do a little like, bit as well, or I play, but like I'm no pro. Yeah, I play enough for me to get melodies out. But right, like, I would never go on stage and be like, <laughs> "I got you." <laughs> but no, it, I think it's I, it's funny when you said uh, Shaka because I immediately picked up on that vibe just listening to the song. Like it, it put me in that place, and um, I was very much like. Uh, yeah, I was just already like keyed into that, uh, and it has that same like festive, moving yeah, nature yeah, to yeah. it. Like, and so it's super, super dope. Um, I'm curious for you, like, you know, when we talk about special guests and collaborations and yeah. things like that, like, um, what for you is potentially like one of your favorite collaborations that you've just like. <laughs> that you like when you heard it or when you saw it, you were like, yo, this is so dope. Um that's that's a hard question because sometimes like when our favorite artists get together, mm-hmm. there's this expectation. Right. And when it's not met, it's just like the greatest <laughs> disappointment of all. Understood. Time. Yeah. <laughs> um <laughs> So, um, I I think just going off, just saying like an easy one for me that I can say without regret. Okay. Get up, get out, and get something like mm. Goody Mob and like I Outcast. Guess, yeah. You need to get up, get out, and yeah. get something. Yeah. How will you know if you never <laughs> even try? And I, the only reason why I knew that song was because of BT's Top Twenty Five Countdown. Watching that as a kid. <laughs> And I would watch all my favorite artists' top twenty-five favorite songs, and um, I would see that, and and I was like, man, I really love this cat CeeLo Green. I just love the way he <laughs> rhymes. I didn't realize at the time I was witnessing like a, a genius. Yeah, absolutely, he's such a genius. Like he can't. He's one of those people. He just gets bored. He's like, let me do rock music. Let yeah. me do Niles Barkley because yeah. I'm tired. Like I absolutely love him. Let's go with uh, get up, get out. Yeah. <laughs> You need to get up, get out, and get something Don't let the days of your life pass by You need to get up, get out, and get something Don't spend all your time trying to get high You need to get up, get out, and get something How will you make it if you never even try? You need to get up, get out, and get something Cause you and I got to do for you and I I don't recall ever graduating at all Sometimes I feel I'm just a disappointment to y'all. Every day I just stay around and I can't be found. Always asking if me some living life like a punk. Times is rough. My auntie got enough problems of her own. Nigga, you supposed to be cold. I agree. I try to be the man I'm supposed to be. But negativity is all you seem to ever see. I admit, I've done some dumb shit. And I'm probably gonna do some more. You shouldn't hold that against me, though. Why not? My music's all that I got. But sometimes I'm speaking just to for this to be manifested. I know you know what I'm gonna say this to you. I get high, but I don't get too high. So what's the limit supposed to be? That must be 
why you can't get your ass up out the bed before three. You need to get up, get out, cut that bullshit out. Ain't you sick and tired of having to do it out? Damn, what up with all these questions? You act as though you know something I don't. Do you have any suggestions? Cause every job I get is cruel and demeaning. Sick of taking trash out and toilet bowl cleaning. But I'm also sick and tired of struggling. I never ever thought I'd have to resort to drug smuggling. Nah, that ain't what I'm about. See, no one just continue traveling this route without any doubt or fear. I know the Lord ain't brought me this far so he can drop me off here. Did I make myself clear? Get up, get Oh, that man, that man, man, that's so crazy. Like, it's so nuts, too, because, like, digging into, you know, the history around this album and this time, like, they didn't, they weren't sure what to do with him yet at this point. So, because he wasn't, he wasn't, like, Goody Mob wasn't a thing yet at that point. So, at the moment, he was, like, he was of course in dungeon family but they were like he was solo at the point and then then there were all the early reports like he was originally going to be an outcast too which is like would have been it's just crazy to think about like that but at that time like that song is so dope everyone kills it uh oh man such a good song like such a good song like has a special place in my heart jamaica (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> so dope so dope um and it's 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 fitting you bring up that because a lot of times what we talk about uh on the set list is we we talk about you know um the part of the set in which you do a cover song yeah. you know and that of course you know made me think of crazy <laughs> absolutely it it made me think about this rendition. Don't wanna go crazy, 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 Barkley, CeeLo yes. Green, Danger Mouse, crazy. Um, that's super dope. Like, what? So, like, is this something that you had uh, covered before, or no. were you just like, let me give this a shot? Like, I, um, I can do some shit with this. So, so that we started that in 2015. Okay, with Omega Watts. Oh yeah, Omega Watts Absolutely. is amazing. Yeah, he's super. And dope. I was like, if anybody's going to do this, I need to call. him him Mm, mm -hmm. because he he did catalina um catafence project half dead and i was like Mm -hmm. oh this guy's amazing absolutely um and i was just like this this song just explained so much for me at the time yeah 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 um and i was like i I have to do something like this and i wanted (laughs) to do something really funky with it right super dope no it i think it like it reimagines it in a very dope way like and um yeah it's just it's so crazy like what he what they tapped into with that song like <laughs> the writing the writing is nuts like oh. nuts i remember when i first like discovered the song um and at the time there was no you know uh it was literally just like a rorschach a rorschach test like um 
video of yeah. of, of it going up around, yeah. and, and I just remember being like, "Yo, this is like it's so crazy. Like yeah. this is this is Goody Mob, like CeeLo Green out here yeah. killing it, and yeah, it's just so so dope. So um, no, but I and I think it, it adds an all it also adds a very interesting and dope layer I think to the EP as well like so I was glad that it was included on there even if it was yeah. 2015 when it got started <laughs> uh it take did it take a few different iterations throughout yeah, that did. time it yeah. Did. yeah yeah super dope work I you know I I just realized I missed I missed something when we were talking about kind of um like crowd pleaser parts in which we kind of talk a lot of times we have the um, send a thing out on Twitter. If someone wants to ask a question or something like that, I'll, I'll fill a response. But the other thing about like the crowd pleaser thing is sometimes I like to ask artists. Um, I like artists to think of themselves as, as fans often. And so when you, when was the last time you were a fan and like, what was like the best live show experience that, you know, you've ever had? Um, golly. Um, when I was a kid, I I went to a lot of concerts where I would just scream my head off, <laughs> Chris Brown, ah! Ah! like literally just losing it in pandemonium. He stuck his head out the freaking tour bus, fainted. Ah! Oh man! Um, but I, I would say, um. I don't even. I don't want to butcher your name. I'm so sorry. Uh, Sian Kuti, Sean Kuti. Okay. Uh, Sian Kuti. Um, Fela's, Afro Beats. Fela's, Fela's son. Yes. Okay. Got you. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I saw his live show in Chicago, and dude, had he had a dancer and the every instrument you could possibly <laughs> think of in a showman. Mm. He was up there for. I had to leave. <laughs> I think it was like <laughs> two hours. I gotta go. Yeah. But just, just the the. I've never felt in that way someone's whole self mm-hmm. being like laid out like that in the music, in the passion and and, and even his in betweens, like it was just phenomenal. Sayon Kuti. Yeah. Don't call my people, now you ready to I mean, what's so crazy is, so I spent uh, pretty much all of March in uh, Kenya and Nairobi oh, and, wow. and, um, and Mombasa, and it was my first time on the continent, so like I was just like taking it all in, just overwhelmed, and um, so clearly like when, when I'd go out and I'd just be around, and you know, of course, like that's um, East Africa, but like you can still hear the downbeat and... Mm. Uh, the Afropop and like all of like all of that like carries over in such a beautiful way. And you would see these these 25 piece bands like just killing, like yeah. just jamming, like it would make no sense. And um, 
it was just such an overwhelming experience being like in that place where like that music was so yeah. prevalent everywhere. But so you can you remember seeing this live and just I being was like, seeing that I was seeing it live, and mm-hmm. you have to understand like it's so it's so much going on. It's like I feel connected to something that I have no yeah. I have no um ancestry for like mm-hmm. i can't say oh i'm from this place sure. but i feel connected right right and, and, and so to see that and to feel it and to feel every drum and mm-hmm. it was just phenomenal and 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 not to ramble but he he had he went on his own rant mm-hmm. he was kind of voicing his his disdain his particular disdain for american rap music mm-hmm. and he's like i hate it Mm. I hate it because it's all about consumerism. It's all mm-hmm. about money. Mm-hmm. Where I'm from, we make music because we love music. Yeah, here people make music because it makes the money. Right, and he's like, it's not the same. This dude, mm-hmm. it's like, <laughs> and when I saw you, everyone was at his foot. Like, <laughs> <laughs> where, right? Where did you see him at? Where Where was it at? I was in Chicago in the theater. Was it Was it the Lincoln Theater? I want to say it was the Lincoln Theater mm-hmm. up north. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Man. Yes, super dope. Yeah. Super dope. Uh yeah, he I mean Yeah. I'm I'm going to make it make it a point to to catch him live in particular yeah. cuz I've not been able to do that. So yeah. that's super dope. Um yeah, we're moving right along here. Actually, moving right towards what would be the closing. Oh. I know. I know. But the great thing about closing is that um, the closing of an album or the closing of rather a set and things like that is like a lot of times when we do that, it's like when we're able to leave our kind of our lasting impression to our to the audience and what we, you know, want them to leave with. And so, you know, I think, you know, to go back to this project that, you know, you realize that there's something else that you've got cooking and that it's not the, you know, it's cool, but not everything. But I am curious, like, you ended this project, Barry Cinderella, with a song called Maria. <laughs> I want to play a little bit about of it. Sure. suffers most optical illusions you are vibrant vibrant and brilliant brilliant and soulful if your soul learn to listen to the spirit and the goons giants and gals will have no fear over you and may romance be no nightmare for each spring of love lust dare take over your eyes but cling to truth each wrinkle bound in grandmother's hands are evidence that endurance is magical and that magic be handed down to you use that power to overcome to lead not oppress speak not arrest your beauty come from within silence the news of the accusers your marital status does not define you if you let these subtle lies bind you you be paralyzed i admonished fight back not settling for tradition at the expense of your soul esau soup come in many fashions so be esther be ruth be bold be truth draw your soul Lord, find your strength in God's spirit, but if you choose, if you choose to continue in this love, it may end in the suffocating of your dream and the wrenching of your heart to die relentlessly into danger is bravery, only in theory. You are not Juliet. You don't have to be Cinderella. Be yourself. Start a new narrative, a new dream, not based on what you have already witnessed, popularized, then polarized, worshipped, then destroyed. Dream. Dreamers of contentment was the next thing to godliness in your life now seeking God first was all you needed to move forward the idols will bind you the worship of men will devour you but your gaze at God will last forever Maria promise me Maria you'll bury Cinderella (laughs) um I feel like thematically it's a good like button end to the project like Mm -hmm. um but like I, you know, would love to hear from you. Like what, 
what drew you to one who produced it um that is all yavis ellis okay yeah 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 yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah yavis ellis did that whole thing that's what's up super dope yeah 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 and was that another case as well as where you kind of just found the had him you found the music that worked for the piece or that was that was i had um why do I have any memory? <laughs> it's <not> good. <laughs> I feel as though the I feel as though I wrote it, he heard it, and he produced around it. I see. Yeah. I feel as though that <laughs> <laughs> That's all good. That's what happened. <laughs> and you know why it's so hard for me to remember? Because I'm just like, I don't I wanna move on. You wanna move on. I understand. Yeah, but um he like I don't even know how he made it sound so cinematic, but it yeah. literally sounds like a, a film score. It really does. Like it really does. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think that it, 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 it really does sound like okay. This is, um, you know, like high crescendo. Like we are yeah. ending at this point, you know. And um, this is the resolution rather than Denouement. So it's really, really uh, strong in that way. Um, but you know, we can. I, keep things moving since uh, <laughs> that is that is not where you want to stay and you know we'll just let our audience know that we'll all be on the lookout for what's coming up next yeah. from you but um i am you know curious what is your favorite uh perhaps if not for yourself your favorite closing to another album you know to yeah. someone else's project where you were just like yo when that song ended i just either sat with my mouth open like what the hell did I just hear? This was incredible. Or you were like, yo, I love this so much. I got to run this back again. Yeah. Like, like what the fuck? Like, so what, yeah. what was it for you? For me, um, at the moment in this era of life, in this era. it's, it's, uh, Leanne Le Havis. She has a mm. song called, um, good goodbye from her, from her last full, full length album called blood. Mm. Um, and I love the song so much. It, it, for one, because I usually don't like songs that end on a low note. This is my first song that I can say, like, man, I love. It's it's the most chill song, but it's so profound. And in mm. in the song she sang, um, no one ever leaves you, and and that's significant to me because me and my friend, uh, we always have this dialogue where we're like, you know, if you if you were ever truly in love with someone. Mm-hmm. Um, do you ever really fall out of love with them? Because mm. if, if you can fall out of love with them, then how can you say it was ever love? Mm. You know, if love is supposed to be this permanent thing, and of course, love, you know, it, it transforms through the years and through times and through ages. But to say, I once loved you, but I don't love you anymore at all, it's just mm-hmm. like, what? How can that be true if no one ever leaves you? Mm. You know, um, yeah. and so I, I love how she how she ends it because it's like this is a good goodbye. It hurts. It's painful, but I will always be with you. So, um, yeah. good goodbye. This is 
I don't need faith. I, I need truth. Prove. It's it's uh, yeah. come on. What? I just remember like, <clears throat> yeah, I completely like the goosebumps is so real. I knew that we had um had featured uh, Unstoppable on our like new music yeah. podcast when it came out. Um, and um, I just remember like tw- like 2015. It was like this Tame Impala's currents for yeah. me and um what like internet ego triple like same year alabama shake it was just some fire music yeah. that came out in 2015 oh, <laughs> it was just like britney like britney Mer- <laughs> oh, i'm telling you oh. so no but no that that is a beautiful such a beautiful song yeah like such a beautiful ending um i realized and i, I normally would end the podcast on or nor that end the episode on the closer, but I honestly feel like this is a good ending because I missed this part, which is I'm meant to ask you for yourself. You, like you do, I think a lot like you in terms of like definitely writing and um, spoken word. And that seems to be like a very like strong linchpin for you. Um, Cause even, I think even in the artists that you've discussed, like the writing is always paramount. I feel like, mm-hmm. like, um, so, you know, that's there, but, you know, you also sing a little bit and, uh, <laughs> you know, play guitar enough to get your <laughs> ideas out. Um, I don't know what else you do. Do you, do you dance, tap dance, model, <laughs> what, what, else, what else goes on? Like, um, I'm not sure what the other talents of Jamaica West are, but, um, I'm curious, like what, if you had to choose a musical artist that, perhaps like had the most profound impact on you and your work, who would that be? Um, I, I would have to say, um, It would have to be Nas. Mm. And I say Nas because of my father. Um, My father raised me on Nas. Mm. He would have us listen to (laughs) It Was Written (laughs) and and Illmatic Mm. over Mm. and over and over again and and point out lyrics and tell us this is why that was a good lyric. Wow. This is why Nas is a lyricist. Now, albeit my father did pass away in 2004, so Mm -hmm. he did not get to, you know, experience the full spectrum of Nas. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, whether or not, there there are things that are debatable, but you Mm -hmm. ask me, 
the person that's had the most influence on me, yeah. I say him because from a young child, I remember going to sleep to Black Girl Lost. Wow. And playing it. And I, if even if you play Not like that a, white star, anyway, yeah. Even if you play a three second, <laughs> I, I would know it. <laughs> Got that white <laughs> star. Right, 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 right. Yeah. Um, and that, to, the, to, the, to this day, that song has the greatest. That song brings me to tears. Wow. Um, so it, it will have it will have to be Nas on Nas. I don't know what you're doing. <laughs> you've been out in these streets. <laughs> I don't know what you're on right now, right. but I will say I, I from that stuff. era, yes. <laughs> Child, you like them thug style, link rocking, the mink copping. Hit you on the sink, a hundred dollar drink popping. The head to make you take them shopping, the foul doctrine. Reminiscent of my first time up in a chick, you was innocent. But now you rent a dick, we're the tightest shit. Chanel looking real, airbrush nails. Hit the gym, hit the scales, haven't sit, but negligent. To see your prophecy, your ebony tone is locking me. The way you moan, make me daydream, or you on top of me. Wishing I could be the one man. But you juggle way too many willies all in one hand. You want to run up in clubs. Getting rubbed on Niggas pull your hair Shake your fat rear Get your fuck on Following week You back there But what you stuck on Weed clouds and cars Puffing with some little nigga Husband not knowing She's out Could you believe Eve Mother earth for the seas Niggas thirst you You just let them hurt you And leave What up my Frontin' like you naive Push your man's whip Calling police When you flip Can't understand it Yo it should be a throne for us But for now That's a whole different zone From us World Diamonds all shining Looking low fun Pretty little face, get a little high. Young girl struggling, trying to survive. Over of the earth, she made you and I. Just tired of playing, same old games. Messing with my mind, emotional things. She got your heart broken, felt lifeless. Grow up, girl, and said you want revenge, so now you act the nicest. So who's ever getting down wow. the track? Yeah, and, and actually, I did a, my first poem I did at Rhetoric. I, I was wanted to ask name you it about Black that. Girl I was, Lost. I was going to ask you about yeah. this question, like because when you said Black Girl Lost, I was like, "Huh, I can see yeah. connections here with um, what has become a very popular piece, uh, very widely seen and distributed Black Girl Cinema." Yeah. Um, can you talk, you yeah. know, a little more about that? Yeah, Black Girl Cinema <laughs> was that. Black Girl Lost was my my major inspiration for that. And I just knew that, like, okay, I'm going to have how many people that are possibly going to see this. I need to be able to say everything that I ever wanted to say <laughs> in life and make it clear. And at that time, they were so, um, even now, but specifically 2014, 15, 16, like so many deaths, police brutality, Bill Cosby, like Bill Cosby, like there was so much going on. There's such um, a question at the same time, an appropriation of the African American woman, um, the black woman, um, the Afro Latina. Like, mm-hmm. like it's like our character was being placed on the TV screen and being sold, but like no one really cared about like who this person really is and so yeah um i was like man i'm gonna say it and i got in trouble really a little bit interesting can you can you discuss the trouble at all because you know a lot of times like and hold on let me play a little bit of it just so that people know when i was six i remember staring at frame posters of black jesus on my grandmother's walls Wondering why he had dreadlocks, <laughs> muscles, and a six pack. <laughs> I remember praying that he would send me a complimentary daddy, just like Cliff Huxtable. But instead, he kept me from Bill Cosby's. Yeah, I'm curious about, like, yeah, I guess before we, before I play, like I wanted to know, like um, what kind of what kind of pushback or blowback did you receive yeah. about it? Well, one, it's not a it's not a um, 
I'm not condemning anyone to hell. Uh, you didn't get the rules? You didn't get the... <laughs> <laughs> that is completely yeah. against the rules. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not condemning anyone to hell. I'm not, um, I'm not you know, picking a, a scripture out of the Bible and, and creating a poem off of a scripture that I read. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it's not entirely... It, it's it's a secular piece mm-hmm. and i'm talking about real issues i'm talking about molestation rape i'm talking about food stamps i'm talking about all the real things that we we witnessed on a day-to-day basis and i'm not giving any real solution mm-hmm. not even really christ yeah you know so that for benny was problematic like interesting um but the thing is is that you know when i read the bible that's what i see mm-hmm when I read um, the book of Esther, like, can I just say this real quick? Like, Esther was married to one of the most um, profane kings of all time. Yeah. And, yeah. and God supposedly, like, ordained that. <laughs> right. So I'm mm-hmm. just saying there's a, there's, there are a lot of things that I think we as Christians, because I know there are, there are believers and non-believers, I think we as Christians bypass the uncomfortable things for the sake of rules yeah. to bring it full circle because it feels good to have rules. It yeah. feels good to be able to say, if you do this, you go to hell right. versus, well, you, you may or you might not. It depends on what God says. Mm-hmm. You know, and so mm-hmm. like that poem was that for me. And it was it was a reflection of all the things that I experienced with my skin color and all the things that people are experiencing, whether or not you place a name on your face or not, you mm-hmm. experience it. And Absolutely. it's very real. And if you get pulled over by a cop and you're black, they're not going to ask you, are you Christian? Oh, we ain't going to shoot you. Right. Right. So it's I'm I'm fascinated by the reaction that you received to this <laughs> apparently just because i guess i'm curious like i don't know like w- i feel like people judge songs and pieces and whatever as though they're like uh, i don't know like uh, trying to find the words i guess like i'm thinking why like what why does a song or a piece why does it have to have a solution at the end like why does it why like because when i think about my life like things don't you know wrap up neatly and Mm -hmm. you know i'm saying at the end of three minutes or whatever the case may be like there's you know years of questioning Mm -hmm. years of doubt years of uncertainty um And sometimes I get answers, sometimes I don't. And I feel like that is more indicative of, of, um, of a true human experience. And I feel like so often in, um, in art that is done in a Christian context, it's, um, like, like the, the humanity of the work is sacrificed for, you know, the talking points, you know? And uh, so it's very interesting to hear that, like, because to me, I don't even hear that piece and go, oh, that's secular. I just hear it and I just go like, oh, that's that's like a life like that's that's the what I exp- that's what is out here in life or whatever. And so to and I guess some of that, uh, maybe all of that has to do with the venue that it was yeah. processed in or, yeah. or written. Like, I don't know. That just. I have a lot of questions about like that. That's strange. Very. <laughs> that being said, um, <laughs> we will, uh, I don't know what, how, let me say this. How do, how can people stay in touch with you? Um, I would, I'm, I'm most active on Instagram. Okay. Jamaica.west. That's where I'm most active. If you want to hear me talk trash every now and then, you can go to Twitter <laughs> at Jamaica West 312. Okay. Yep. There it is. And we can look forward to some new work coming out. Yes. Um, yo, I meant to say, um, oh, well, my computer died. Uh, as we're talking about kind of things that we have in the works. Um, 
it made me think about something a little more recent on your end. Um, it's a piece called Poetic Justice. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Eyes lit up a little bit there. Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, I'm going to play just a little bit of it because I, I just, sorry. Now I... Freedom. 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 The power or right to act speak or think as one wants without hindrance or restraint of not being imprisoned or enslaved freedom everybody talk about freedom everyone wants their freedom from the beautifully written anticlimactic brainwashable theological bullshit vipers crooks and scientists of manipulation molesters and rapists trained in gaslighting victims with scripture from the pulpit simultaneously condemn the same chick they let with the fragrance of evangelical Trump supporters supporting the same regime that hung strange fruit from trees on holidays more blue than Billy. Back then we called them master. Today you call him your pastor. He'll never heal the pastures. He'll call this poem slander. You go home feeling backwards because your black skin be constantly demonized by whitewashed tombs and yet you sit Billy Holiday blue in the pews that exploit and use gifted black bodies to grow audience members aka dollars we're the only ones with bruised hands from picking all that cotton i mean concert i mean teach minorities how to live and worship like white's conference scared to leave because then we're told we'll be without the father because they cracked out shot down and institutionalized all our yeah. i just had to get this out real quick so yeah um talk to me about this a little bit just curious like yeah poetic justice it's like some flames in here yeah, that was just me basically saying, like, I'm tired. Like, mm -hmm. this is bullshit. Yeah. Like, this is utter bullshit. Mm -hmm. SBC, um, mm -hmm. all the things that, that were happening, that, that are happening where there is zero tolerance um, for anyone who wants to create racial unity, mm -hmm. who wants to stand for, who's, who wants to stand against injustice, even some of the fathers that forefathers that you know we would say oh, man i really looked up to this person mm -hmm. silent yeah on issues and and it enraged me and it it's missing the mark and so i said well i'm gonna do what i do best and i'm gonna write about it mm -hmm. and people didn't like that and i got a few calls and text messages and i have not taken that video down <laughs> people have hit you up about this people were furious <sighs> they're gonna be all right so that's crazy. Yeah. Nah, it's it needs to be said. And I feel like I feel like oftentimes what's really whack is like people tiptoe around the like like the very grave injustices. You know what I mean? Like grave. and I'm just like, why why are you like using kid gloves with this shit? But like it's not using kid gloves on us. Like why why don't you take it as seriously and the niceties that people want to couch it around and like have like very polite conversations and want to have, well, we might have to agree to disagree. And this is not a theological, like, like what? The what? <laughs> okay. So, yeah. Um, no, but it's a very strong piece. And so uh, I, I, you know, to the set list listenership out there, um, if you mess with that, like I say, hit jamaica up with um positive feedback since she's gotten so much negative about it so <laughs> thank you let her know you feel it but <laughs> thank you nonetheless uh so on twitter it is uh jamaica west 312 yes and then on instagram it is jamaica, jamaica dot west yes. and um other than that anything else you want to let the people know drink water <laughs> drink water absolutely <laughs> Hydrate. Hydrate yourself. <laughs> Stay away from rappers. Yeah. I Save think the I'm... bees. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, uh, this was another episode of The Set List. I'm so very thankful, Jamaica, that you made the time to come through. I really appreciate it. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. This is on 4th District. We thank you so much. And we will be back soon.